Question. Can you talk about the true origins of humankind on Earth and why there is still not a straightforward, accurate, or complete answer? Did advanced beings set up your DNA? Were you an experiment and are you still? The answer to this question has been successfully put forth. An invitation for you to consider information, factual information as it was put forward. But it is also seen that the questioner is not fully complete, not fully compensated as it would be for putting forward the complexity of questions all held together, banded together as it would be. So further clarification is offered. To answer the question, are you, were you an experiment? Well, yes, but what is not an experiment? As you wake in the day, is it not an experiment how the day will go? Will you do the same thing you have done on a previous day? Will you accomplish more or less? Will you be more or less creative? Will you be safer or less safe? Healthier or less? Pleasant or not? Mentally capable and well-adjusted or not? Happy or not? All of this is somewhat experimental. And at the end of the day, you will recap. Hmm, how did the experiment go? How did I do today? How did I consider myself today? How do I compare myself to others, to other co-workers or family or friends or to my own goals or how it will be? All of these then are experiments. And to that said then, Humanity then also was, is an experiment. Yes. How did the DNA hold together? Was it a good, a complementary combination, a long-lasting one? Does this combination lead to more clarity, intelligence? Is it heartwarming? Does the physiology long last? What will the offspring be? What is the future projection? So yes, it is an experiment. Now, in order to understand that it is an experiment or to agree upon that fact, there must also be then agreement that some thing, some one saw fit to invite the experiment, invite you to participate in it. And so there is somewhat of an understanding, a clarification needed then that it was not simply pure evolution. Oh, look, now you were something else, another being, an animal-like being, and then you were not. Then you evolved into a human. But if it was all an experiment that can go one way or another, then something else must be attributed to that experiment. Who or what is experimenting? With what purpose or goal? Or does it even matter whether the experiment is a success or not? In this understanding, then, we must say, yes, there is an experiment. Yes, look, there has been longevity. Look, a human being has evolved, has arisen, 
has become more mentally proficient, physically agile, and able in his own way to move forward, evolutionary speaking, into a timeline, yes? All of this, then, is an experiment. It is experimental. Is it active still? Yes. If it were not, then there would be no measure. You would be looking only at this moment. You would not be looking backward into your past to see where you have come from or how you have changed or adapted. You would not be looking forward or asking, is it still experimental and what may be next? All of this, in some ways, is a sign of success as it is viewed. And yet, at the same time, it is difficult for humanity to consider this. But the difficulty as well comes from the idea that as an experiment, you envision, well, a laboratory or a small rat caught in a maze and being plucked here and there and prodded and experimented upon to see if there is one result or another. But that is only one small definition of an experiment. An experiment can be grand not only decades old, but generations and eons old. It is an open-ended experiment. You are given life. You are accelerated into a purpose. You are enlivened and quickened and like that. And then it is up to you to carry that experiment forward to see what you will do. Is it still an experiment? Yes. But in this way, you are a co-participant. You are not simply being experimented on. You are not the lab rat in that way. You are a co-participant, a co-scientist, if you like, coming to know yourself and life better in that way. Did another being set up or bring about the results of your DNA again? Yes, because it would not have been prudent otherwise. And we will speak of this in the going forward topics as well, and you will come to understand it more. It is prudent to have one who is, well, professionally adept, would you not say, to create such a grand project or to be the one authoring it, would you not say? If you were then to interview those of your medical community in search of a fine doctor, would you not want one that was well qualified, one that was well studied, one with references, one who had been known to have many successful outcomes, you see? And so this is what your then co-experimenters are then. They are intelligent. They are wise. They are caring. They have had great successes, not only in this world, but in other worlds. Otherwise, they would not lend their very own genetic material to this. So the very idea that they have lent of their own and their own kind to this experiment somewhat says that they endorse it, underscore it, that they have invested themselves wholly and deeply in this. Now think about how life would come about upon other worlds if it was not simply the earth. Would it not then come about of its own, or would it be better if, again, there were well-qualified beings experienced to assist in the project, to give a world its due, its best possible chances, opportunities, so that they are more than random. So yes, there is randomness, yes, there is an experimental quality, 
and at the same time upon this world there is a beauty there is an earth-like beauty there is a usefulness of all of the elements and materials of the earth all of the dimensions that can be summoned called upon all of the nutrients that could be considered of the earth in that way can it be of benefit to you does it feel so bad to know that this is an experiment then and that every conclusion has led to some kind of success even those that you see as incomplete they are not unsuccessful it is simply that you do not see the whole picture you are not able to expand upon it from all dimensions from all points of view to zoom in and zoom out and explore it from within and without and to finally understand it because you are a participant as well by choice in this grand experience how will you know at some point the whole story well more than likely you will not not at this time because the whole story does not well it does not involve you you have not been part of the whole story there are other stories that intertwine with yours there are others that intersect with yours there are timelines that are part of your own time and dimension and ones that are not that have little and nothing to do and would in fact confuse it and so when you are not given a full and complete confusing confounding complex answer there you will go and say ah there again we have not been told the complete truth something is being withheld from us what could that be what are they not telling us now and you see that is the difficulty in not knowing is that you believe that something is purposeful withheld from you and that you ought to know it or you ought to remember it on your own or your memories have been tampered with or your dna your lifespan your other lifetimes have been altered or tampered with and that is not always the case it is not mostly the case and so it is better for you to think upon all the things that you do know that you have learned that you have put together the puzzle is not complete but not because there are pieces missing it is only that it is a multi-layered puzzle and until it is viewed from the other layers from within or above or beneath or before or beyond you will not be able to see those parts of it those pieces again the timelines not only the dimensions but the timelines also do not always coincide they do not always meet sometimes it would appear that they would go off a cliff they simply appear to end dead wall dead end like that and of course that is not so but where your ability to see beyond that wall or that dimension ends it appears to be dead dead end just as when you see your beloveds your loved ones leave their body and go elsewhere beyond you say to yourself they are dead they are gone and the part of that that is more correct is that they are gone they have gone beyond your ability to see or perceive them but they are not dead and it is not a dead end so again you do not have the full picture only because of the space that you occupy the body that you occupy the thoughts that are yours the reality that is yours for now for the time being you are a being in time we could say caught in time yes that would be appropriate as well 
caught in time caught in time of the third dimension looking beyond it forward looking forward thinking and at the same time looking for more complete answers and so here you have one here is a more complete answer and we will continue to visit this question offering different well dynamics and viewpoints and strategies and ways to look forward and up and down and to capture more knowledge and to hold it in a way that it would make sense for you, sensory sense for you. As we come to speak of other beings other than human beings, you will see that they too have the knowledge, some limited, never unlimited, always what is most useful. Sometimes more simple, sometimes more complex, but always what is most useful, just as it is for you. It is hoped that this clarification then has brought to you more, well, peace than you have had up until now.